Hello, 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 and welcome to the Rag Company podcast, the Rag Company main show, number 32, I believe it is now, huh? Yeah, 32. Yeah. I think that, that's Levi's age, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if Levi was here, he could tell us, but oh, he's hey. not He's not here, so where, it's, where is Levi it's just us, and we're, we're like doing a totally new setup here as far as recording. So we're kind of experimenting. We're seeing if yeah. this works. Now, naturally, we're going to need a little bit wider lens on the camera, because when Levi comes in here, we don't just want like half his head uh, yeah. showing up in the yeah. shop, but basically... We're honestly going to wing this episode, guys, because we didn't really make a plan for it. We Levi gone. It was just kind of like, uh, just go for it. Got, got some stuff going on. We got some fun ideas where we're going, coming yeah. up soon. And well, we, we're going to Colorado pretty soon here, too, aren't we? Are. we? We're going yeah. in a week in two days. We're yeah. going to be going down there. And, uh, well, and Dylan and Jason got fun plans for us down there while we're do. there. And they do. They're yeah. planning out our entire week for us. They're getting all these sorts of yeah. crazy ideas. Well, it's like they run the place or something. Down. Yeah. They're going to put us to work. We're not going to be able to sleep. At all. No, yeah, so no. I, I think we're literally going to be standing and walking around the entire time. Yeah. Not, not going to have yeah. a break. But uh, yeah, so it's just Anthony and I today. And uh, apologies to everybody who decides that they don't like me being on the podcast because you know it's it's really Dang. too bad because uh, you know what I I'm actually the one who started this podcast so you I'd are. feel kind of kind of crappy if I just what you need to do. if I just you, you can, know you can leave I will take your hey dang and, <laughs> <laughs> just I changed seats though so hey I'm not really in the middle I mean we're both sharing the middle so I'm really stage left but Dane, uh, <laughs> Dane adds in the commentary when it's necessary and he also yep. provokes good conversation he asks the great questions and he's kind of our, our, our intermediate like our I'm intermediate like the mascot that, man that, that helps out so he he's definitely a necessity in the podcast you know between me and Levi we can get lost down and go you down guys you guys have holes. the detail knowledge down pat and for the detailers I don't blame them if you know my commentary doesn't cut as deep so to speak but hey when it comes to the microfiber or the it, towels it or when enough. it comes to car stuff I, I will be your encyclopedic friend on that front I can yes, do that he, can. he knows everything everything he knows everything but, uh, he's, our, he's our jalopnik yeah right? as, speaking as of which I, I got myself a new car uh at the end of last week you, you i i teased it that. before and i we i just ended up it. getting we it yeah so, so what did you get dane uh <laughs> well it's uh, people go oh you got a volvo like they're just like oh volvo it's a that. it's a volvo wagon it's an 06 Ooh, v50 so yeah it's it's the second year of that newer body style v50 uh which is the wagon the yep. s40 is the sedan yep and it's not a normal V50. No, this is no. this is the uh, the top trim V50 from the time. So it's got the 2.5 liter five cylinder. It's turboed. Yeah. And uh, it makes a, it makes a good noise. Five cylinders sound great. If you've yeah. never heard a five cylinder car, go look one up. Whether it's an Audi or a Volvo or something like that, they sound amazing. It's Incredible, yeah. it's basically like it sounds exotic. It's half a V10. So it is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, in it's, the, it's no, half not a V10, not in the same so. way. Not in the same way that uh, a four close. cylinder is half a V8 because four cylinder. <laughs> Cylinders tend to sound very different from V8s. So you're saying my Honda Civic doesn't sound mm, like a muscle car? No, Aww. I hate to break it to you. There are some four-cylinder bikes I've heard that sound amazing, though. That sound kind of like a eight-cylinder, but that's, that's that's more your territory. Anthony is the bike guy. Notice we're not talking about detailing yet, because once again, I feel like we could talk a little bit about cars. We could just kind of do stuff, and then when Levi comes back, we can break more into yeah. some more specific when he stuff. Comes back to put us back in line. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, so. But there's a lot there's a lot coming up in the detailing world for us that has to do with Dane's car, which is really cool. We have a lot of cool ideas coming oh, along. Oh, it's an art um, design, by the way. So oh. it's it's got the special trim package. It's got the brushed aluminum roof rails. It's, a little, a little it's late, bright uh, little red. Late, little late info there. Yeah, yeah, well, and it's it's got you know it's not necessarily. I, I wouldn't go out and buy big baller wheels for a car, but it's already got them. So I'm yeah, like, it's yeah, got some pretty cool. They're wheels. pretty it's, pretty cool. It's a really good they're, looking. Well, car. they're they're Verstone. I think. Ver Verstein. Ver Verstein, Ver however Verstein, you pronounce that. Verstein. Sorry, someone will correct me in the comments, yeah, got, I'm sure. Um, got a nice little dish on them. They look really cool. They're, they're like a two-piece wheel design. Yeah. Uh, kind of look like BBS LM wheels, which, which I yeah. mean, they're probably reps, and that's fine. And It happens. But they look cool. Yeah. Uh, so he picked up this car, and... Really excited. We went and took it for a drive on Friday. He let me drive it. and <laughs> I, was I was like, Anthony, you drive Boosted Cars regularly. This is my first Boosted Car that I've owned, so I want your input. Yeah. Just and like, tell me tell me where this is at in terms of, you know, it, fit and, that, and finish compared to what you're used that's to. That's kind of the funny part is that, you know, when you get your first Boosted Car, when you get a first car with like with like a turbo or a supercharger or anything like that, you it's are fun. like, you, are, you went from here <laughs> to here and you feel that way because... I've had a, a naturally aspirated car that made equivalent power. 
but it just it doesn't feel the same. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Once you get into forced induction, that's when the game changes because you, you know, you had you only had so much potential with an NA car, right? You're sitting there like, ah, I can only you know do so much intake, you know, headers. Half the time exhaust, I'm DDing a Miata too, pump, so you know, there's like small <laughs> things you can do, and you can't really tune that. And then you get into the boosted realm where you're doing forced induction, and now there's a whole new realm of every single little pipe, every single little hose, fuel pump, you know, tunes, you name. It just it's, becomes it's had a to few you. things done to it too. Yeah. Um, just you know, little things. It's got you know, like a typhoon intake, like the K and N cold air filtered setup. But then, mm-hmm. I mean, that's nothing particularly exciting. But everybody's like, first thing you do, cold air intake. Yeah. Half the time, they don't even do anything for some cars. It doesn't seem like it does enough for what you're looking for. But in this case, it makes sense. The car gets yeah. hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, and, and it's got a, it's got an it's... elevate intercooler, yeah. um, which looks really cool. And he keeps telling me I need to rip off the bottom grill so I could show it off more. I'm just paranoid about taking a rock right to it. Yeah. But uh, no, there's, there's little things here and there. I, I got some new stuff coming. So when you see the videos, what, what we're planning for basically to kind of cut to that is we're going to do a little detailing video series on it. And the idea behind it is, so you just bought a new to you used car. And what are some of the first things you do? Well, because this is bright red, it's Swirl City. You can see it. You know, the, the previous owner means well, really, really nice guy, but, you know, there's there's some swirls on it. So, yeah, it's it's time to go in, give it, you know, a nice, uh, you know, little, little polish, little cut, uh, get in there and find out what we can get rid of without taking all the paint <laughs> and all the clear off. But, uh, yeah, just little touches all over. And basically how you can kind of get a used car up to what you would appreciate as a almost new car level of, you know, look yeah. inside and out. Correct. And so so uh, I'm going to make Anthony host that one. I'll, I'll do the lead-in intro. I, I've been brainstorming all day how I'm going to how I'm going to make this video Dane's, happen. Dane's, he has no Dane's idea. on it right now. I'm, I, let, I'm, I'm letting him drive. I, right I'm now. on it. Oh no, Dane's interrupting. <laughs> it means it's going to be a bad I'm podcast. Oh like, no. Like, should I say? Anything? Yeah. I'm like, no, he's got a lot to say. No, no. I, I, I just have some ideas about it. So basically, yeah, I wanted to kind of come in and introduce and like, yeah, okay. Normally I'm on the other side of the camera, but I wanted to talk about, you know, everybody goes through this eventually. Mm-hmm. If there's somebody who likes buying used cars, maybe they haven't done it a ton because I've done it a few times, but I'm not like some people I know where they're just literally buying a new car every year or yeah. even more than that, which to me is just, whoa, I get used to one you got first. But anyway, you're, you, you got a car that's new to you, but it definitely needs a little love. It needs a little TLC, cleaning things up and uh, inside and out. So you got some like water stains on the fabrics and you've mm-hmm. got like little nicks here and there all over the stuff, center console, all normal stuff, wear and tear typical things you run into with any used car. But uh, it can be brought back. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, a detailers, of course, know this. You get a car that, you know, looks a little worse for wear, especially red, because it really it shows a transformation from beginning to end, for sure, when you, when you detail a red car. But uh, th- this will just be kind of a fun example of where you can take it from and to. Because I bought it. Most people would look at it like car people, not detailers, but just car people would look at it and go, that's a cool car if they're into Volvos and all that stuff. But I think, you know, anybody, I get a lot of looks on it, but we can take it that much further. We can really, you know, take this to another level with some fairly simple, straightforward stuff. So we just want to kind of record that process. And, uh, you know, the car will look a little different because it's getting tinted tonight. So between the time we shoot something today, it's not going to be tinted. But by the time we start actually doing stuff, it will be tinted because I don't want to live in a fishbowl. So (laughs) there's that. Anyway, I don't want to cut off. I'll I'll let Anthony kind of pick up here. What's some ideas you have for it? Because you saw the car. You kind of have some ideas of what maybe little things we could do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All <laughs> I, right. I got a word I'm salad like, coming out the yin yang. I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> how is he still going without catching his breath? I'm like, sitting there like, is he gonna yeah, like? <laughs> And I think I think this is what the viewers were getting at. They're like, my God, that guy, that Dane guy talks a lot. No wonder he made a podcast. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's awesome. And where do I even begin on this? Okay, guys. So he's got his new car. The idea was that we are going to kind of make a series out of it. It's going to be like a four-part series, uh, uh, 
basically new car inspection, new car detail, new car, you know, a little bit of everything. Uh, I mean, and it's like more of a not new car, new used car. New used car, it's new to we you. Would, we would explain that. And so this would be for anybody watching. This could be for, you know, the everyday everyday detailer, the hobbyist detailer, or the guy that has no idea what he's doing that wants to learn what to do. And uh, we're going to try to make it to where, you know, everybody can be involved in this and it doesn't take a professional to do this. And uh, basically kind of what it comes down to is we're going to inspect the car, kind of go over all the little imperfections that we see anything that we can fix and Dane had a lot of lot of cool opportunities on this on this car that most people wouldn't see they see red car they see a little bit of gloss to it and they think oh it's good right it, it's it looks done. good right yeah but realistically you know he's got a lot of plastic trim on there that's faded that we can hit with solution finish oh, he's yeah. got water spots on his windshield a lot of his glass that we can remove uh, same thing a lot of his paint uh, we're gonna be able to I polish up his, you know, door handles and all these, all these little things that really kind of a little cherry on top. Those black fog light grills, they yeah. they bother me because they're so gray. I know they can look black, yeah. but they're they're just really gray right now. Solution finish. Hit those a solution yeah. finish and uh, polish up his head headlights. Use a, our headlight um, uh, um, uh, coating on them that we have from Optimum. There's a lot of lot of cool little small things that we can do, and and that's just the exterior. Uh, you know, and maybe even mentioned I uh, venture into some rock chip repair using like mm. Dr. Color chip or something like that and, and getting a lot of those. <laughs> I, got little, a, I got a chin that's really good for it. Little, yeah. little chips filled. <laughs> and, uh, and as far as the interior goes too, I mean, Dane kind of set himself up. It's a very uh, light gray interior. Uh, light yeah, gray it's like a beige, beige. gray. So it's grayish. It's grayish. <laughs> it's, uh, it's some lighter colors, meaning yeah. that dirt and all that is going to accumulate pretty fast. And, Shows uh, and it's everything. Already, and it's already pretty dirty right now, so it's a lot of uh, good opportunity to use fabric uh, optimum uh, car carpet. Because we haven't done a lot of videos with interior stuff. We did like the leather cleaning video yes. and the carpet video, but those are those are one product, a little straightforward. This we could get a little more into yeah. it and explain what we're looking at, why we're doing it. Because a lot of people, th this is a good, I, I think, intro to people who just bought a car and they don't know where to start. Yeah. Maybe maybe they just need like uh, you know a little brainstorm session. Except the video gives the brainstorming for them. Correct, and I mean it'll it'll make a, a, a checklist system as well, and yeah. so. Um, we don't know if it's going to be a three video thing, a four video thing, but we'll try to make it easy to follow, not too long. Uh, and I think it's going to be really informative. The interior is going to be nice. Doing an engine bay cleaning is going to be nice. And we're going to be utilizing <laughs> a lot of the tools we have, you know, whether yeah. it's the IK foamer, the, the multi sprayer, um, of course, a lot of our different chemicals, and, and perhaps maybe some new stuff that we have uh, coming on the way, which should be really fun as well. But we got those uh, detail brushes. We've got to put those yeah, to use. <laughs> we have the detail brushes. We need to put those to use. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, I think you, you grabbed a really good. Uh, I guess it's just a really good car that presents a lot of opportunity for uh, our detailing videos coming up because we have so many things going on, but at the end of the day, people still request these longer detailing videos. They want to yeah. know the in-depth, nitty-gritty stuff. Uh, we've done multiple polls on, on uh, YouTube where people voted and said they yeah. wanted the long, uh, boring stuff, and we're sitting there Multiple people but... said, the longer, the better. Yeah, so... I that's... don't know if longer always equals value, though. Sometimes it's just, just noise. <laughs> yeah. So you, you want to have long, but you want it to be efficient in the message it gets out and, yeah. you know, the information you're taking. And make sure all that time spent is actually getting you something in return rather than just, you know, burning time. So, yeah, we want to give you something that you can use as a resource, whether it's today or five years from now, it should still be useful. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the Techniques should stay more or less the same, even if the products change a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think it'll be a fun series. We haven't done anything yeah. like this before. Uh, he's got a really cool car. I mean, if you guys saw it, you guys would. Are you going to put a picture up for people to uh, see? I'll, I'll have Tim throw up a picture when he edits his okay. podcast. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's really, really cool looking. And um, it drives like a dream. It, it's, it's pretty quick for what it is. Probably <laughs> it's two, probably 250 horsepower. And, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it, it's, it's no 218 slouch. stock. And with the stuff it's got on, yeah, it's about 250. And probably about 250 to 270 torque. Yeah, it feels good. I mean, yeah. it's good. it's a good car. It's, it's like, enough for what it is. It, it's a wagon, but it's 100. it's not a big car. It's actually a fairly compact wagon. So yeah, and it doesn't it's feel cool. like a big car when you're driving it no. either, which is really cool. All wheel um, drive and all that fun stuff. So so we have that going on. So we want to do that detail video, our videos, and get yeah. those out uh, for people to watch and, and enjoy and. Um, got a lot of cool ideas but uh, beyond that we're gonna be filming at Rupes next week yeah and that's gonna be a blast how uh, many videos are gonna be doing there we have uh 
We what, have a like lot of ideas. If five to ten different things planned, yeah. they yeah. got a lot for us in a fairly short amount of time. Four we're days. only there for a few days. Yeah, four days. So we're going to have uh, to fit, fit we'll make it a, count. <laughs> a little bit of everything in. And, and of course, you know, enjoy uh, Colorado. If you guys are from Colorado and you guys know of any cool places to go eat or go get food or drinks or anything like that, let us know down in the comments because. And Rupes is doing like a thing, not that we think all that highly of ourselves, but Rupes is doing a thing where they're like, hey, come eat the TRC guys. So they're throwing out a little thing. I think that's Thursday. I don't I don't know night? why you guys would want to uh, Yeah, I don't, if you I don't do, know why you get that impression. Come say hi. We'll hang out with <laughs> if you. If you feel like it, try, we're, we're exactly like we seem on the podcast pretty much. So if that seems cool to you, awesome. If you don't like that, I don't know why you're listening or watching, but all right. <laughs> yeah, going to hate. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, if you want to come hang out with us, meet us, talk to us, it'd be really cool to meet you. Uh, put a, a, a maybe a username to a face or... Yeah, uh, no, that's always nice. Every show uh, we go to, is. you meet people who you've interacted with online and then you're like, oh, Oh, you're that guy. Yeah. yeah. We, and sometimes it's, oh, you're that guy. No, and kidding. we have people that come, like, there was actually a guy that came in uh, last week to our store here in Boise and, and came to our storefront and saw me and he said that he had been listening to the main show. And, and, it, it, and I'm always, like, kind of, like, shocked for a, a brief moment there when I, <laughs> uh, like, people, they, they, you know, they look at you and they say, oh, I listen to your show all, all the time. Yeah. And, and you haven't met this person before and I was excited to meet him, but... It, it's cool. It, it's cool to find out that people are listening and, and we're building a good audience and a lot of dedicated listeners as well. A lot of people yeah. that come back and listen each week and look forward to the podcast because if you're using those late nights where you're polishing or detailing and you just want somebody to listen to. It's a familiar to, voice in your ear, you know. It's just like a nice little, you know, for some people I think it's uh, it becomes nostalgia over time because they're like, oh, yeah, listening to this reminds me of when I polished that this or detailed that whatever yeah. and you kind of get that that sense of familiarity over time and then it just becomes such a habit you don't think about it you just do it yeah yeah no, but I, uh thank I you agree. to all those of you who do that i agree so um other than that though i mean the weather's getting warmer here in boise i, I don't want to sit here and talk about the weather but <laughs> we're pretty excited it's a segue it, there's a it, point it was a. Uh, we had been waiting a long time for the weather to start getting nicer. Uh, last year we had the snow apocalypse, and I think we had <laughs> snow in March. We didn't mm -hmm. have our first, you know, 60 degree day until the beginning of April. We're finally yeah. getting into the 60s. I was able to ride my motorcycle over the weekend, which was fun. You didn't seem uh, so sure about it this morning. <laughs> yeah, no, I rode this morning, and that, this is one of those awkward time of years uh, where if you guys ride a motorcycle, then you'll know this that uh, it seems like a good idea in the evening, right? You sit here and you think, oh, I'm going to ride my motorcycle tomorrow morning right because when I get off work it's gonna be really nice you're taking into account that that later in the day it's gonna be 60 degrees but that morning is gonna be 32 <laughs> yeah so that was me riding to work this morning and uh, you I, came in and you're just hands, like blue and you're just blue. my hands hurt <laughs> and I was bundled up and it, it was still cold still not ride. enough so but uh, looking forward to warmer weather because we have a lot of cool new video ideas. Um, we got lot, some cool cars lined up for videos, lot, too. A lot of really cool cars. And that's something that uh, we're going to be demoing a lot and doing a lot of really cool product videos uh, with a lot, of, a lot of towels, too. We've getting get a lot of requests yeah. of people wanting just to see towels in action. And we have our product quick looks where it's kind of a little one minute segment of some music of it's us. the most basic it's version just a, it's just a of basic uh, you know. use of the towel but people want a little bit more in depth maybe instead of a one minute just overlay of music and, and, and wiping things they want to see somebody talk to about the towel to say what its uses are yeah. what they recommend it for and what it's also maybe other things that it's good at and so yeah me and Levi are probably gonna be putting together some videos like that for people that are uh, interested in just learning more about towels or maybe just our recommendations on what we like to use and yeah. uh, kind of going from there. It's that it's that pretty necessary in-between step between the, the quick looks, which are like a 30-second, do you want this, do you not want this kind of situation where you can just eyeball it and decide right there on the spot if it's for you or not. Yeah. Where these like kind of two to four or five minute videos are going to be focused on the product so you, you get some of our other videos are focused on technique yep. and they're they're focused on a process and then the products are interchangeable but in these videos we'll be talking specifically about the product yep. and how it functions in that given situation specifically starting with our towels of yeah. course but the reality is at the end of the day they're towels so you can use them however you like it's just our recommendations but there are certain ones that really benefit from being used a particular way, say like yeah. the glass towels or you know something like that, where it may just not be the right towel for other situations. Yeah, well, and, and a good point there. So I, I guess to give you guys a, like an example of what we mean, uh, 
the glass towels, for example, the yeah. green glass towels that we have, our standard green glass, which are actually one of our cheapest towels that we have yeah. uh, in terms of just cost. I absolutely love them for glass. They're my number one go-to for cleaning glass. And I mean, I have my choices of all the waffle weaves and all of the premium glass towels I could ever want, but for some reason I always go back to the green glass. And that's because I've developed a system or a way that I clean glass with them that gives me that streak-free finish every single time. And a lot of people, when they fill the green glass towel, they think, ooh, this feels uh, kind of catchy and sticky and they don't like the way it feels on their hand and they don't want to rub it on a window because it's got a lot of grab to it. It'll grab the window and, and kind of, I don't know, it, it, but it doesn't feel great. That's the point. <laughs> but that's the point. So um, with that towel, what I prefer to do is I saturate one side in glass cleaner. I'll grab whatever glass cleaner I'm using, whether it's Meguiar's or whether it's, um, you know, Optimum No Rinse or, or even just some I like visible, visible glass. glass. Yeah. yeah. Whatever I'm using, I'll spray it on one side and I'll saturate one area. I'll spray it onto the glass itself, do my major wipe flip the towel over to the dryer side and at that point there's still some um, some lubricant onto the window and then I'll buff it off and there hasn't been one situation where I haven't gotten streak free glass streak free glass uh, out of, out of that uh, going grass on your windshield yeah, now huh out of that uh, out of that system and so I love that towel but that's like a technique that some people may not know some people may spray it on the glass yeah. and wipe and say oh it's too grabby for me I don't like the way it feels that's how you get overspray though yeah and that's how you can get that so um, that's one technique and then another thing would be like the platinum pluffle uh, that's my favorite drying towel it's actually my favorite microfiber towel that we have here it's my all-time favorite it's unique and with the platinum pluffle a lot of people like drying by the way the towel feels on the surface, right? And say if you're drying O and R, you're drying water after you rinsed off your soap, some people may find that the platinum pluffle has a little bit more drag to it than let's just say the Korean waffle weave would or the twist and shout would. Um, using the pluffle with a drying aid is the best thing ever. Whether it's a quick detailer, whether it's optimum car wax, whether it's Opti Seal, um, adding a little bit more lubricity to the surface on whatever water that you have makes that towel an entire new towel. It makes the drying experience so much better. But that's another quick tip that a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. Uh, if you you know spend the extra one second, pull out a quick detailer, do a spray on your panel, and then dry the pluffle it feels night and day difference. And, and that's yeah. the same thing with actually the Korean waffle weave. Uh, if you've ever used a Korean waffle weave and used that with a uh, um, uh, drying aid, yeah, it, it feels like butter. It's it's amazing. That, that's what you find with the, with the towels. You know, naturally, because we're towel focused and the products are interchangeable in many cases, yep. although we definitely have our Correct. favorites and stuff. Yep. We give recommendations. We don't give, you know, demands. You must use this. It's not, mm -hmm. we, we can give suggestions. But I find more often than not, if somebody complains about how a drying towel works, yep. they're not using a drying aid mm -hmm. or they're, you know, they're, they're just not getting the towel a little bit damp first, just giving yeah. it a spritz at least Correct. to go and dry because they think, oh, it's a dry towel. I just go straight onto it. And, and it's like, well, you can do that. That's what a lot of people do when they whip out the old beach towel out of the yeah, uh, trunk. Yeah. But really, you, you stand to gain a lot if you stop that nonsense and you start using a drying aid of some kind. It doesn't even have to be like a fancy, expensive, yeah. dedicated oh. drying aid, although there are some of those out there. Yeah. If you already have like O&R or something like that, you can use that to just yep. kind of lubricate the process, especially if you're already washing your car mm. with it. You just spray a little bit more down and then you just go with it until yep. it's dry that way. Rather than just letting it dry, you actually go over. But just, you know, instant detail or anything like that, that's your that's your drying aid. It makes a big difference. And, yeah, to those of you who are using dry towels to dry your car, try getting them just a little bit damp. Not soaking wet, obviously, but just a little bit of liquid on the surface kind of wakes them up. Yeah. It exactly. gives them it gives them a little bit of that, that rejuvenation, like, okay, time to go. And really they work vastly better once they've had that little bit of uh, charge given to them. Same thing with, let's just say, polish removal, for example. Compound and polish removal. You're in an area where you built up a lot of heat, right? You mm. got done polishing your panel and you have now, uh, Dane actually witnessed this the other day, <laughs> yeah. where I was doing a, a test spot on a, on, a, on a panel and I was using some really old school compound and the compound really heated up with a microfiber pad and ended up gunking up on the surface, right? And Industry I, and, standard and, and, stuff, and I, and too. And I told Dane that this was going to happen. I said, this is going to build a lot of heat and it's going to gunk up. And he saw it happen. It gunked up on the surface. And I said, hand me that Eagle Edgeless. And he saw me grab it and I go to wipe and the Eagle didn't even 
nick the surface of this compound that had dried up. I mean, I would have had to sit there when you was as much elbow grease as I could to remove this compound. But then I said, all right, Dane, hand me that <laughs> bottle of O&R right there. So I sprayed my Eagle Edgeless down with some O&R and I sprayed the compound, right? Removed like that. Instantly. It was, I mean, it's it just, it's little tic, tips and tricks that we can add on top of these towels that, yeah, they may introduce some product, but I'm sure I could have done the same thing with water. I just knew O&R would be a safer um uh, it gives it gives more lubricity than water would. than water would. Yeah, exactly. So and it wasn't it wasn't O and R wash and wax. It was wash and shine. So it was okay correct. to put yep. on there. Yep, just yep. blue O and R. So there's little tips and tricks that we can give you guys, and I think we really should make more maybe more segments about that. Maybe yeah. like a kind of like a learn it all about the ins and outs of microfiber and, and tips and tricks from the microfiber guys and maybe that'll help a lot of people and like dane said a lot of these products are just you know mix and match you know they're they're you can use you don't have to use a certain brand or whatever it is they're all interchangeable to a certain degree so you can kind of have fun with it and use your own stuff uh that's been one idea i guess in uh yeah. in, in a big loop circle of we should uh, of we should make like a videos. like a choose your own adventure style video where it's like a flow chart if this then this and <laughs> yeah. you can like make a, a quick video where uh-oh you ended up at this point what do you do <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah you can set up that'd I've, be kind of fun i think I've, I've watched videos like that that had <laughs> annotations at the end or of, of certain other videos to click yeah. on from there <laughs> like you ended up here click here or i think that here. would really confuse somebody who had just found the video from an outside source and only found that video or didn't finish and they're it. lost yeah. in the middle of this maze of videos they don't know what to <laughs> i think we're on the same page we yeah have lost some people but, yeah. but um... point is when it comes to this stuff really yeah. if you're frustrated with a product it's probably not the product's fault and that's not to say it's your fault it's just you didn't know that there was an extra little yeah. technique you could apply to suddenly make everything easier because anybody who's using eagle edgeless on you know polish removal anything like that knows more often than not it'll work amazingly just yeah. magically but there are those situations where eh, it's not quite the right tool for the job and that's why we ended up with 150 plus different kinds of towels because people <laughs> always look at like my god why do you have that many different kinds of towels who possibly would need those and it's like well there's a lot of different kinds of personal preferences out there yeah. and each one is the right fit for somebody yeah and uh, which actually brings up another conversation that I had with a customer the other day and a customer had asked me how many times can they wring out a a certain towel before it's uh, no longer absorbent mm -hmm. and in that question I it always it always kind of puts a smile on my face because there's a certain type of person that rings out a towel and not that that's a bad thing it's just a lot of these people that are ringing out towels are, are kind of maybe stuck in this old school method of doing things right the kind of the sham wow uh, stage of of, of, <laughs> of drying or even just even just good old bath towels and yeah. uh, a lot of people use ringers or you can hand ring it uh, and they say you know how often can you ring this towel before it's no longer absorbent and that's kind of a and that, it's kind of a weird question because you have to think about you know what how do you define absorbent you know is it simply yeah. just a towel that can level water and you know remove the majority of the water off the surface or something that's going to dry to a perfect finish because for a lot of these people that are out there that completely saturate a towel and this can come down to drying methods that I want to mm. talk to in a minute uh, talk about in a minute they completely saturate a towel and then they go and wring it out and they go to wipe another area now that towel that was once saturated that is still relatively wet that they go to remove more water with do you consider that area dry? You know, you're going to see the snail trail of, yeah. of the water that you've left behind. Some of now, it will dissipate. Some of it will disappear. Some of it will probably, you'll, and a lot of it, you'll probably see the streaks left behind on yeah. the paint. And at that point, does that person call it good? Like that's dry and they're happy with that? Are they going back over it with a different towel? Or do they expect that towel that they wrung out multiple times or once and that was still wet? to be able to remove that to a perfect finish. And I have to talk about what's realistic yeah. in, in terms of that. And, and a lot of people may not be as picky, but in terms of where detailers are today and where microfiber is today, we have different expectations than the error, than the era, not error, the era of the <laughs> sham wow and, uh, and the bath the towel, The chamois right? and general bath towels. I mean, because back in the yeah. day, when I was a teenager, you know, washing cars, I would wash my car and if I didn't see any large pools of water on the surface or if I didn't see any drops of water, I would say, Looks that, pretty that's good, dry. dude. That's, and, I yeah. would, and, I would, and I would move <laughs> on, right? But now, if I were to 
wring out a towel and dry it and look back and see a snail trail, I would think, oh, wow, I, I, I have yeah. to hit that with something, right? <laughs> but now I have to hit it with an instant detailer. What he's saying is getting into detailing and... has caused a mental illness. And, yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of people can agree with me on that. But it's it's one of those things where it's like, where do you call it good? And so uh, I talk to people that ask about the whole towel wringing thing. And I say, what do you define as dry? And they say, well, as long as there's no water on the surface or... I can't you know, see it. It's or, not there. Or Yeah. Or... <laughs> yeah. It has to be perfectly dry and I tell them that you know microfiber towels are I mean they're not they're really affordable basically they're, yeah. I mean they're there's something that they work really well our towels work awesome and you know spending the extra dollar fifty spending the extra two dollars right to have a backup towel in your back pocket right if you do want to level most of the water and you want to go back over those areas that are just kind of damp with a snail trail and hit it with an eagle edgeless that's, yeah. You could totally do that, and you're going to have a much better experience versus having a towel, having one towel that you count on drying an entire vehicle and being wrung out four or five times over. And, uh, and like an uh, apocalypse and, movie where they're rationing. And they're yeah, just well, like, this is my last <laughs> towel. Well, it's true I can't. People call and they say, I want one towel that does this. And I say, well, maybe what if you get one one towel that does that and maybe one backup towel and they say well I don't want to have I don't want to have multiple towels I just want to have one towel so I, I'll, I'll put them I'll put them towards a really absorbent towel I'll say hey the twist and shouts are most absorbent drying towel yeah. you know that should be able to do a majority of the work but I recommend saying hey pick up a creature edgeless pick up a you know a nicer eagle pick up a an edgeless 365 pick up something that you can do a, a one last quick Spot touch drying touch up towel. With. And some of them get it, and some of them say, yes, that's an awesome idea. And I uh, kind of convert them to understanding that sometimes you need more than one towel. And then there's other You're people, just trying to sell me more towels. Yeah. <laughs> then there's other people that say, you know, no, I just want the one towel. And I say, okay, this is the best, this is the best towel that we can offer you as far as how many times you can wring it out. Uh, bring out as many times to your heart content or what you would consider dry on the surface. And I know I'm down a deep rabbit hole, but... Another thing I want to talk about is drying methods. And this is some guy, somebody that came into the store and we were talking about drying cars. Uh, and he was asking me what the best method of drying a car is. And the first question I asked him was, are you in direct sunlight? Mm. And he said, mm. no, I'm in, a, I'm in a shaded area. And I said, okay, because my answer really varies depending on whether you're in shade or sunlight. Of course, if you're in sunlight, you're always going to dry the areas that are most exposed to the sunlight, right? Yeah. You want to reduce the chance of the water spotting. You want to hit all those areas first because it's going to evaporate the fastest, dry the fastest. Now, if you're in shade, now you have some more options. Now you can actually really develop a good technique when you're drying in shade or if you're drying in a garage. And the reason why I say this is because a, a lot of people's first you know, reaction when it comes to drying is the same way they went to washing, right? They may start on the top of the car and work their way down. And in almost all other cases of the wash process, I would say, yes, start from the top and work your way down. Same thing with polishing, same thing with everything else, right? You don't want to be leaning up against something that you've already corrected be, to be polishing the roof. Yeah. But when it comes to drying, I'm a big fan of drying the sides of the car first. And this is where I'm also using multiple towels for people that are curious. And the reason why I say this is because if you're in the shade or if you're in the garage, uh, your hood and your trunk and your roof are going to be holding all that water. That they're, is a stay put. They're going to stay put. They're not. It's not going anywhere. I mean, unless you're using a you know a blower and you're you're blowing it off, that water is going to stay on those areas. So that's why I tell people hitting the sides of the car first, right? And of course, don't I mean, don't hit the lower area, save those for last, but yeah. hit the sides first, hit your front bumper, hit your rear bumper, hit maybe your, your, your trunk lid on the back there, hit the sides, hit the windows. But then for the areas that are on top still, use that same towel that you were using to do the brunt work, right? Maybe lay it over the hood, lay it over the roof and absorb, pat dry most of that liquid and then pull out your new towel. Then go back over and hit your hit your roof, hit your trunk, hit your hood, you know, with that new towel. And this is a good area or a good time where a drying aid comes into play. Yeah. Because let's say you've taken a brunt of that liquid off and you but you still need some more lubricity to that towel, pull out your drying aid, spray your towel, spray the roof, spray the hood, and wipe it down. And the reason why this technique works the best, at least in my opinion, is that you're not overly saturating your first towel. You know, because yeah. the second you overly saturate your first towel, you know, on the roof yeah. or the hood or the trunk, 
what what is that towel going to do on the sides of the car, right? You're going to be more efficient hitting the sides first, right? Still saving the lower areas for last, but hitting the sides first, then doing a majority of the brunt work on the roof and the hood and the trunk, and then pulling at your new towel. And I can get how that can seem counterintuitive because the whole top to bottom approach to things mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yep. You totally get why you do that specifically when washing. That makes the most sense. But when yep. it comes to drying, but, You've but, washed the car now, and now you're drying it. So you shouldn't have to, if you did it right when you washed it, you shouldn't have to worry about picking up a bunch of junk when you go to dry it. So if you hit a lower section before you go to your top parts, it's not the end of the world. Exactly. And, and, and one thing I pointed out, though, for the people that may be sitting there thinking, well, I don't want to, you know, put my, my towel, you know, yeah. on, the, on, the, on the hood of my car. That's the most seen thing right after I've already dried off everything. What if my towel is overly contaminated? And I'm not telling you to go and take it and rub it across. I'm simply telling you to maybe lay it over the top, pat it down, right? Get most of the water off, right? And then come back with a nice new towel. But lubricate with the drying but aid. But lubricate just, with the drying aid just to be on the safe side. Avoid any scenario that finds you wiping a towel on your paint directly dry. Yeah. Just it, it doesn't matter whether you're drying or you're polishing or whatever you're doing. Try to avoid any scenario that involves you putting anything on your paint mm -hmm. without some sort of you know lubrication going on to give it a little bit of a buffer. Yeah. Because yeah. without that, that's how you end up with all these little micro mari marks. And it's not the towel's fault at that point. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of scenarios where even the nicest towels, whether they're ours or another nice towel, anything like that, touches paint. The wrong paint, you look at it wrong, it sneeze, and it just <laughs> it looks like you know yeah. veins in a leaf, it's so bad. But yeah, yeah spider webs, and they happen. But there are ways to avoid that and lubrication chiefly amongst them. Yeah. And so th this particular technique, this is this is my personal preference. This may not be what you want to use at home, and it may it, it may be counter opposite of you know, or it may counter maybe other videos that we've had in the past, right? And everybody has their own methods. This is just my personal preference. This is what I like to do, mainly for the fact that my hood has a giant uh, gaping <laughs> hole in it, you know, for my for my hood vent that I have. So there's all this water that pools into this section. I'm talking like at least a couple cups of water. So if I were to hit that first, my towel is absolutely saturated. It's yeah. just, it's done for at that point. So I would have that one towel that can get me my hood alone, or it can have one towel hit the sides of my car, hit all the other areas that I can hit and then hit the roof and then do a majority of the of the damping on the on the hood yeah and then use my drying aid and come back with a nice towel and clean it all up and it's just really efficient I like I like that technique a lot and uh, and drying is drying with a drying towel that's another area where you have a greater chance of inducing uh, micro marring and scratching, like Dane says, if you don't have some type of buffer there. And a lot of people don't realize that. You know, you get excited because your car is almost finished and you just want to dry it and you want to go drive it or you want to dry it and park it in the garage and take pictures of it or, or whatever you want to do. Yeah. You know, it's it's one of those parts where uh, it shouldn't be overlooked. It shouldn't be something that's that's quick and, and, and done and, and you call it good. That should be probably one of the areas where you take some time doing a good job. You get all your door jams. You get underneath your your trunk you get underneath your hood area and get all that excess water because if you're using hard water that water's going to dry up in those door jams dry up in those trunk crevices and and you're gonna have all these white marks everywhere which doesn't look great it's often the last thing you're doing with the car so knowing that why would you want to introduce problems right at the last second that's the most yeah. frustrating time yeah, no, to do is. something wrong so pay attention when you're drying Follow at least, you know, some of your advice. People can adapt it to their own needs, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it's solid advice. You know it works because you've done it, and your car has a lot of, like, intricate, you know, holes and vents and stuff. He's got an Evo, so there's a lot of spots on it. Yeah. Mine's kind of slab-sided, so I'll find out how that is to wash. I did it once this week, and it was pretty easy, but, yeah, yeah you, you figure it out. But, you know, it just... Take, take each thing as a recommendation. It's not the end-all, be-all. And I really, I, I hate it when people take any suggestion as, oh, you're saying that's law, that's the rule, that's that's the yeah. word of, it's like, no, it's personal opinion. I do things away, and like you were saying about the glass towels, this is segueing back. I really like those green glass towels. I like the blue yeah. Korean glass towels, the premium ones. I like that style of glass towel, that kind of flat with the sheen. Mm -hmm. um, herringbone weave is the yeah. official yeah. name of that style of weave, where it's very flat, but kind of dense. Yep. Um, and I, I always like to tell people about those towels because they ask me, what's your best glass towel? 
Well, I, I tell them, I put a caveat on it, and I say, yeah. this is my favorite glass towel. It's usually the premium blue this or the green. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. Yes, and they're like, yes, towel. I want your input because you're the guy talking to me about towels right now. Okay. Yeah. I, I won't say I am an expert detailer, but I feel like I have at least a strong expertise as far as the towels go and the construction and why they're made a particular way. Mm -hmm. So I tell people, yes, these towels are my personal favorite because I find they give the best finish. And if that's what you're after and you have patience, they will give you the best results, as yep. Anthony already said. Some people don't like the fact that they grip on the glass, and they do bunch up in your hands sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's just a fact of life, and it's because so much of the surface area of that towel is on the surface of the area you're working. Lubricated or not, it is going to be grippier, and it is going to bunch up in your hand. Yep. And if that's something that bothers you about a towel, then it's not the right towel for you. But that doesn't change the fact that it gives me the results I'm looking for and a lot of other people the results are looking for. Even window washers love them. Correct. But if you can't stand the bunching, that's why there's the waffle wheel. Mm -hmm. less surface area touching the surface area you're working on yep. has those pockets so they're little divots and the uh, like the FTW glass towel where it's a twist pile it has some distance between the glass itself and the actual lower part of the pile of the towel mm -hmm. and of course that also means you're not going to get the cleanest wipe the first wipe because all that you know open surface areas leaving room for a little streak here a little streak right. there you just go buy it a second time it's not a big deal but it's it's just understanding that knowing the limitations of each thing and how you can apply a given technique to get the best results and understanding yeah. nothing's going to be perfect right out of the box if you expect everything to be magic you're going to be disappointed more often than not. Yeah. So it's just, it's understanding the limitations and working around them. And it's not a compromise. It's not a bad thing. It's just understanding that not everything is going to be perfect. It's just what's right for you. Yeah. And so it's, that's my very long winded yeah. way of making the point because it's people just, always ask me that. And I really yeah. got to stress to them. It's different. It's, it's, it really just comes down to personal preference, and, and we try to give our best recommendations on things that we like, and, and hopefully a lot of people see the, see things the way we see, but uh, there's, for, for example, <laughs> uh, uh, Troy Sowers said he likes the, the Drago as, yeah. as a glass towel, and the Drago is a 365. He swears six, up and six, down it's the best. 70-30 blend. I mean, that's our recommendation for uh, polish removal, wax removal, compound removal. Uh, you can use it for coatings, and he thinks it's the best glass towel. And we say, have at it, man. If that's working and it's giving you a streak-free finish every time, go for it. And he know? details regularly, so he knows what he's looking at. Yeah. And that's what gives him the best results, and that's the best towel for him. Yeah. Ab and there's absolutely. nothing wrong with that. So whatever you take away from stuff, try not to get upset thinking everything somebody says word is law. That's just a recommendation. You can take yep. it for whatever it is, but you don't have to be angry about it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like yeah, when we say we like yeah. O&R, there are other rinseless washes. There are other waterless oh, washes out there. Guys, All yeah. that stuff. <laughs> it's, it's a big world out there, and feel free to explore it. Just because we happen to recommend or like one thing doesn't mean everything else is automatically the worst thing ever. It's not a zero-sum game. So so anybody who approaches it that way and they say, oh, these people mention this because they have an agenda, mm -hmm. it's like, well, yeah, we happen to sell those products and we happen to like them. We have access to them, so we like using them a lot. That's part of it. But it doesn't mean we don't use other products, too. Yeah. And there's plenty Absolutely. of situations we like to, you know, kind of branch out and experiment and see what else is out there and find out if, you know, if there's something else you should be looking at, too. Speaking of which, okay, so... I would, so this is, Hot topic last this, week? No, sorry. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, this, so, this, um, so this may be old news to some people wa watching here, but um, I was at Walmart the other day uh, going through the auto parts area. I was grabbing some oil for one of my bikes, oh, yeah. and I was walking through. I also was grabbing some air fresheners because mm. I, like, I like the little trees air fresheners. What's that, that going to do on a bike? <laughs> you know, for my car, sorry. I mean, sorry, I, I guess I can to. put it in my motorcycle seat for when I'm having a bad day. I can just... Uh, Put it by the exhaust so it gets hot and just yeah. releases all the <laughs> releases I'm all sure the it's poison. <laughs> I'm people are like, man, okay. that sounds, that sounds I like digress. Fine. I digress. Nice. Go ahead. So um, I was at Walmart. I was passing through the aisle and I saw that Chemical Guys has products in Walmart now. Yeah. And I saw this on the Facebook uh, groups that we're a part of, Detailed Review. I saw it in Auto Geek Detailing 101 and uh, a couple other groups that we're involved in. And uh, I saw that people had posted that, but I had yet to see them in the store myself. So uh, when I saw them, I mean, a lot of people are, are, are giving them crap and, you know, kind of, you know, hating on the fact that they're in a big box store now. And 
honestly, I mean, I don't mind. I know that their their products are more expensive, you know, in the store, but in my opinion, I you know, I think Chemical Guys is on the same level as is all the other great detailing brands out there. I you know, uh, I mean, Adams for example, or McGuire's and Mothers. I mean, I think they're all they're all great products, and I'm not gonna you know. They're all, they're all know, means they're to all, an end. Yeah, they all they all work, and I mean because before I started using Optum, I, I can before, hear people screaming in the comments right now. This one's better than that one. Don't listen to them. Uh, I know, I know. It's they're, it's they, always they, they a big fight. fight. fight Let people do what they're gonna do. Fight on it all day long. <laughs> do whatever, do whatever yeah. you guys want. But at the end of the day, the products, you know, if. Granted, they're, they're, you're the right user. They will work, and they will do what they need to do. If they didn't work, they wouldn't be in the store. And Compared so, to the other stuff on the shelves, there though, they they fit right in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so I wasn't like I wasn't. <clears throat> oh man, chemical guys in the store. What a you know what a sellout or what a cheap product. I didn't think that at all. I thought to myself, oh cool, you can get a you can get a cool product here and a cool bottle, and they got really good smells to them. And I actually went around. They each, do have that. I, I didn't go to each product, <laughs> and I opened it up and I smelled it, and I was like, that smells pretty good. And so I noticed they had the. Uh, uh, their car wash in there. Their car wash was pretty expensive. Their car wash thing was like uh, sixteen bucks or something like mm-hmm. that in comparison to McGuire's Gold Class, which was like nine bucks or something in the store. Which before but, I worked here, that was all I used. That's all I used. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, I mean, I was using Gold Class up probably back a year ago or so. I mean, and I I loved it. It was great. Oh, yeah. And then I then I found out about Optimum Car Wash and. I haven't gone back. Hey, I mean, I, I love Gold Class for what it is, but O&R, it, it's just a process for yeah. me was easier. Yeah, O&R, yeah, O&R. So if you use Gold Class, don't feel bad. It's it's great. I mean, there's yeah. zero complaints I good, there. I think it's a good car wash. It smells good, too. It smells clean. I feel like yeah. I was always excited to use it. But um, no, so yeah, Chemical Guys has their wash in there. They did have a um, their waterless wash, which mm. is a polymer-based uh, wash product. And I smelled that. That stuff smells pretty good. I think it smells like cotton candy or something like that. That, and, that might be their was, their single strongest attribute is yeah. the smell of all their and, products. And, and I'm a big guy on I'm I'm big on smells. I mean, I'll openly admit that my favorite smell is Adam's Detail Spray. And <laughs> we don't even sell it, but I'll tell yep. you guys right now that that's like it's like that crack smell. to me. Whenever I smell it, I'm like, wow, that's that's the best smell. And he thinks it smells like. I think it syrup. smells like artificial cotton candy, but that's just <laughs> me. I don't know. I just I like the way it smells. I'm not gonna fault somebody for liking it. it to each their own. It is my second favorite smell is O and R though. I mean, blue O and R, I hands down my favorite. And then third would be uh, Optimum Spray Wax. Oh the, yeah. yeah, the pina colada smell that I used it yesterday, and I, it I, makes me thirsty after I. Yeah. I, I was gonna say after I drink it, and I'm like, no, wait, I don't yeah. drink. <laughs> I don't drink here, that. Pounded down car wax in his spare time, but little did no. you realize. So I mean, when I saw like the products in the store, like I said, I I was I mean I was more upset that people were upset about about them having products in the store. And I think good for them. Detailers, got, we love you, but you get upset over some really petty stuff. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like what like what does it matter? Just, just gotta have the adult talk right now. Yeah. Y'all get petty. No, and then so I. <laughs> Smelled their interior detailer smelled good. Their exterior stuff smelled good. And yeah. and I, like I said, I've been I used Chemical Guys before. I started using Optimum stuff. I, I mean, I was buying Chemical Guys from, I mean, I, years ago. I, I was buying yeah. their stuff, and because I watched their videos on YouTube, the same way a lot of people watch our videos, and it's great marketing. But it's also it it shows me how to use a product for somebody that's new to certain things. Yeah. And you know, four or five years ago, when I first saw their videos and I saw them using products, I thought. Wow, you know they make it seem really easy, and I'm really easy to follow. Yeah, you know why? You know why not buy from them, uh, or buy a different product and apply it to that same apply that same way. No credit know? where credits due. While there were other people making detailing videos on YouTube and other online, you know, forums and stuff. Chemical guys, to their credit, really did see the potential there, and yeah. they <laughs> exploited the snot out of it. <laughs> they did a good job with it. Look at their so, subscriber rate. yeah, they, no, they, it, have, they have a ton of subscribers. Big, and all those yeah. people have been around forever, and 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 that's the thing. And a lot of people, you know, will they think of, we're all like at odds, but the reality is, no, no, you know, no. there's room for everybody, and not everybody has to be at each other's throats. Yeah, it, it's it's a big world out there. And, and some people give them crap because you know what they they had they they did have fun videos, right? They had yeah. their morning wood scent, right, and they played it off as morning wood and and I think that's funny yeah. and other people are like oh that's such a chemical guys thing to do and I'm like well that's pretty cool that you can associate you know something that they're doing cr- the marketing worked you're talking about you're it talking so about it. so <laughs> that's kind of uh I don't know that, but I thought it was cool that they had their stuff in the store and, it, and as as media guys we can just we can appreciate that and <laughs> I think that goes for anybody like Adams has a ton of videos out there as well mm-hmm. and you know you look at the people who do see that angle and, and choose to put out you know 
know, informative videos or tutorials and stuff. And I think the fans really appreciate that because yeah. it gives you a resource and it also gives you a little connection to the company. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we, we like connecting with all you guys. So that's a big part of why we do the videos. We way we do it. We're kind of quirky in yeah. that sense. Pro- probably mostly my fault. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we all have our, our odds and ends and we just try and make it fun, but also approachable. Yeah. I mean, so well, if you ever got questions or suggestions, we take them all. So, you know, shoot all emails to Anthony at the rag company dot com. No, shoot and, all uh, to Dane at the rag company dot com. He needs more emails. Our emails aren't hard to figure yeah. out. Sorry. So, uh, no, we're always open to suggestions and we like create we like creative stuff. And I think we're finally kind of starting to and not finally, but I mean, we're, we've really kind of found our, our niche in, in our kind of editing style. And Dane is really kind of dialed in, dialed in his <laughs> his editing style to where it really I mean, people are really catching on to it. They like it. I mean, our latest video, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, is our Orlando experience. Oh, yeah. Uh, from the MTE to uh, hanging out at Obsessed Garage, hanging out with Adam LZ, the full experience video is up, and he did such a good job on this video. It's, it took me a lot longer than it should have. It feel, I mean, it feel <laughs> but like I had to get that Watch it, Wednesday it, out first. That was number one on the list. I feel like I was there. Well, I mean, I was there, but I mean, it made me feel like I was <laughs> along Well, I'm glad it made there. you feel like you were there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't even remember that. No. Um, it was, it's a really good video. You guys got to check it out. He put That's a lot fun. of time and work into it. There's a lot of cool little uh, fun text little reads that you can read. and I like peppering in the little, jokes. Little I, I like eggs. I like my little little memes and jokes and stuff. I, I know. Uh, oh, let's put a shout out to Detailed Review. They love their memes and gifts. Yes, so, they do. Yes. Yeah. If you're looking for a place where you speak in gifts all day, that's the Facebook group for you. It's the only place <laughs> where you can have like, an entire conversation in gifts and like people understand. And It's and, real. That's and, literally what happens. Yeah. And you can just take away from that and say, wow, I was really enlightened today from that gift I saw. And, <laughs> and it's a true thing. Yep. But uh, no, I mean. Long story short, guys, there's a lot of different ways you can um, you can dry a car. There's a lot of different ways you can you know, use products, and we try to give you the, the I mean, as as much uh, I guess purpose or as much uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for, Dane? Well, yeah, I mean, what we're getting at is there's. There's a lot of ways you can wash a car. And it's not, we don't want to sound like we're wishy-washy, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, <laughs> I can't help the dad bad. jokes just, yeah, bad. but basically I'm what you're so getting excited. at is you don't want to sound like you're flip-floppy, wishy-washy, but at the same time, the reality is, yes, there are many ways to do the same thing. Yeah. And I don't want to say skin and cat because, hey, cats don't deserve yeah. that. But... And don't be mad when you find <laughs> products in a store that, you know, they're, they're obviously doing something right. I mean, really, how mad were they really? I think it was just something to talk about. I that's, think so. That's more often than not. People are like, oh, I'm when not, you see I've the never, detailing I've groups get all buy chemical enraged. Guys. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, what do you use? And they're like, I use turtle wax only. I'm like, oh, okay. Not that turtle okay. wax is bad. But turtle I mean, wax snob elitist. Sorry, oh, yeah. Sorry. I can see the comments right now. Like, oh, so he does oh, have so opinions. <laughs> it's, well, it's but just funny that you know, we're guys here. talking into microphones. Yes, we have opinions. Sometimes they're just out. And if you don't agree with them, great. You can tell us about it, but it doesn't mean, once again, it doesn't mean our word is law. It doesn't mean we represent the the rag company to the T. The rag company's opinion could be different on some products. It's fine. But you you, you got what you got and you make it work. Yeah, we just we just like to have fun. We don't know why you guys listen to us, but you know you guys are still here. <laughs> what, how many minutes in are we right now? Oh, how how yeah. far in are we? Oh wow, we're fifty five minutes in. All right, well I feel like we still got a little more time. Why don't we finish this up by uh, talking about the fun we had last week, as far as like the you know the science aspect of O and R and all that. Yeah. I feel like we could talk about that for a very long period of time, we but I feel like we don't want to get too far into it. The reality is we we'd really like to actually have you know. Ivan, Dr. G on the podcast and really get into the the science behind, you know, O&R and that sort of thing. Because as you know, we are not scientists. We do not profess to be. However, we do encourage people to follow the science as dictated by the manufacturer. If it can be verified by a third party, you know, scientist, anything like that, if it makes sense, then it makes sense. But I, I get it. Some people just go, I did this. Logic dictates that doesn't work because I can't see it working. Therefore, it does not work. And, you know, in layman's terms, that's that's one way to approach it. But that's not that's not the end all be all. I don't have, you know, microscopes for eyes. I have eyes. So I can't see what's going on on that tiny level. And there is a degree of trust, but you can verify it. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's and, the difference. You can verify it. And I, I think it's one of those things, too, to where uh, for a lot of people, hearing Dr. G on a podcast would mean a lot. I think, you know, hearing mm-hmm. him talk about, I mean, 
I, mean, I think he is. He is on the Optimum Synergy podcast. Yeah. Uh, Dan and Ivan, you know, talk with him from time to time, and I'm sure they've talked about it there at least, you know, a few times. But it would be great to get him on here, just you know, reaching a different audience and stuff. Yeah. We have some yeah. similar followers, but at the same time, there's a lot of other people who well, you know, well, listen also, to one and maybe not the other. I mean, I think it also mean more too because people might listen to Dr. G on the Optimum podcast and be like, "Well, that's Optimum. It makes sense that he's on." There, sure. Right? Yeah. People just assume, but, "Oh, ulterior motives. They want yeah. to sell product." And yeah. it's like, yeah, but if the science is correct and the science is fundamentally sound and solid it doesn't matter where it's coming from or whatever i mean i saw comments like i don't trust anybody's credentials i only you know do what i can tell on my own and i figure out my own stuff and that's fine like figuring out from your own experience what works for you that's that's 100 fine but yeah. if you wash a car following the procedure that you know o and r has and then at the end you don't have any swirls or scratches well then you did it right and yeah. it worked as directed i know i think some people <laughs> think they're like oh that's too good to be true some I people just... like want to go out of their way to, to they pain. see something like oh people like that i want to destroy that yeah. <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> like, yeah that's, that's what you want to do and you got nothing else better to do i mean then then more power to more you more but, power to you but i mean I, I but know. well by the way like okay yeah, it's funny because I'll, I'll address that. i'll address the elephant in the room because i know this one always comes up and anthony's okay. like oh no but the fact of the matter was yes scott from dallas paint correction oh, no, did dang. comment on no. the video no, yeah no no he, he commented on there and i I was plenty polite to him. He got some, you know, little little digs in. But at the same time, I, I really fun wanted digs. to be, yeah, nice, fun digs. Scott. But like I it. wanted to be, I wanted to be really fair because I know anybody looking at this who's not familiar with you know, parties involved and whatever, have him on the podcast. Like he he essentially invited himself. Oh, I but I said absolutely, yeah, we'll we'll have you on here, and that would be really interesting to hear his perspective and have him tell us in real time like what his thoughts on it are and why he feels the way he does yeah. because. Because there are different opinions out there, and I'd like to see why, you know, in a given video, say, like in some of his videos, he doesn't have anybody coming back with, why'd you do that, or why didn't you do that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, people like that always feel free to com comment on uh, our videos yeah. or other detailing videos, why didn't you do that, why did you do that? But to have an actual conversation, a dialogue, both ways, and, and to be able to figure out in real time, especially with Levi here, possibly, you know, Ivan or Dr. G or something like that, that would be really great. And to be able to hear the perspective, and it's not not to turn it into some, like, prize fight where people are battling it out. It you doesn't, actually buy it doesn't have to be... To fight, um, <laughs> We're going to have pay-per-view. Uh, yeah. It's actually going to be a Vimeo a, download. Yeah. you got to pay it's, for it. It's $29.99. Uh, <laughs> And it gets you a full hour of the Cause podcast. Because we're just heartless shills. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the reality of it is, uh, like, I didn't want to address him by name before, but it, he, he made himself very apparent in the comments, so I just wanted to address him directly. And Scott, we, we'd love to have you on the program. I extended the I invitation you, you for, to for him to, to email me. I haven't gotten that email yet, but at the same time, I'm back. leaving it open. It. So if he wants to send the email, we'll, we'll have mom. We'll set up like a, like a Skype call or something, yeah. and we can set it up so we fun. can do it in the studio here and actually talk with him because... Uh, you know, w when you have differences of opinions, there's no reason to get super pissed about it and to actually, you know, fight over it. Because at the end of the day, w what does that help? O yeah. Other than, you know, I, I, I get from a marketing standpoint why having like a, a different opinion from something can get you more views or get you attention where everybody else kind of goes with the crowd and yeah. so-called cheap and all that stuff. But if you have a different opinion, you stand out for better or for worse, and you can leverage that. But let's find out, like, really, what what is the, the thinking behind it? What is the real purpose behind it, if there's purpose? And we'll, we'll give, you know, a very fair shake. So, yeah, yeah exactly. that's that's mostly the thing is well, we don't well, want it to seem like big bad company teams up on one person because that's not how it should be. As he's talking, no, he's not like that's anything, that that is no, not. But I, I really do. I want to have a mature discussion about it and just really see where people are coming from and why. And for all you know, you could actually agree on a ton of things because I don't know about you. I've watched some of his older videos and I happen I, to think I, he's got good information I, in I there. Do. I, and I think so as well. I think some some people's fans, you know, they get riled up and they say like, oh, this person is taking on this person. It's not like that. It doesn't have to be like that. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a fight. And that's that's all I wanted to get out there was just basically to say, you know, people can get along, they can disagree, but as long as, you know, you you air your stuff in a mature way, 
you can figure out, oh, that makes sense. This person does things this way, so that doesn't work for them. That's my yeah. very, very vague way of you know, re- referring to it. But I think anybody listening would agree, oh, okay, that would make sense. It might not be as exciting, yeah. but at the same time, you know, it's it, it's just the reality of it. So what you're saying, Dan, is there's not going to be a belt or a winner or anything because... No, be that would encourage bad that. behavior because you know what would happen if we encouraged that, if we set it up where people were just ready to go head-to-head snapping... Thunder- no. Snapping necks and fighting is like Thunder terrible. No. <laughs> well, that's how Detail Review does it. But no, like that would get people stoked, but that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be productive, and that wouldn't help the industry. Like, yeah, what you want to do true. is help yeah. detailers and home hobbyists what, and just people okay. interested in detailing. And, okay, so back to the IDA podcast, yes. right? We talked yeah. we talked about it's not you know it's not what the detailing industry can do for you. What can you do for your industry, right? Yeah. You know, it's not. Hey, this, they're giving me bad information. Okay, well, if they give you incorrect information, how can you give it good information back, right? And I think Scott, with a lot of his videos, gives a lot of good information back. And I think that he has a lot of um, cool techniques and, and, and opinions and things like that that work for him, and they work for other people. Otherwise, he wouldn't have this following, obviously. Solving problems on so, a budget is a good niche. I, I mean, that's, that's no, not, no not, fault for not, it. It's not a bad problem to have. And so... But if you, you know, have you both at a table and maybe have both techniques or both preferences on how to do things and everybody talks about it and, you know, certain people can say, yeah, I like doing it his way. And other people can say, I like doing it his way and settling on that and not saying either one it's, of them is it's wrong. It's OK, because then you understand the perspectives yeah. and then you don't just have to be all, oh, this guy and oh, that guy. And it's just butting heads that that's not productive. Yeah. Exactly. So figure out what's no. right for you. Find a product you like. Use it often. So, so Scott, <laughs> we sent you an email. Please email us back. We'd like to have you on the podcast. Yes, sir. We have already talked to Ivan and Dr. G, and uh, they seem more than happy to, to help out and, and jump on here and talk as well. And I think it'll be fun. It'll be a fun time. Yeah. So I think that wraps it up for today, Dane. I know. We're, we're going to be out for uh, for a while, so we'll, we'll get that set up at a later date. But yeah. just wanted to say that, yes, we, we wanted to address that. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. And and uh, if you have suggestions or comments for topics on the show, of course, we're always open to it. So, yeah, leave, leave your comments below the video if you're watching on YouTube or on Shout Engine if you happen to be there. All right, guys. And we're on iTunes, too. Yeah. All right, guys. With that said, we're closing up. So have yourselves a great week, weekend. Till we're back, uh, we might be doing one from Colorado. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Talk to you Adios. Later.